So then you guys start working on the second album. Okay. How many songs do you show up on the second album? Well, okay, no, okay. hold on, hold on. Before, before we get into that. Right. Were you in jail during part of the, the nah. filming of the first album? No, nah, I see. That's, so that, that's wrong as well? That's wrong as well. You were not in jail? Never. Okay. Nope. So the second album starts getting put together. And at this point, Wu-Tang had already, had already gone platinum? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many songs do you show up on that album? I'm on more than I'm on for Into the 36, you know. How many? Um, I can't remember exactly how many songs I'm on. But, you know, Into the 36, I'm only on one. Right. So, we sing forever. It's also a double album. Correct. You know. So, I interviewed this artist in the UK named Akala. Mm. And he said that... This time, Wu Tang Forever was the that was the in the UK because I know that album wasn't that hugely as well received here as Thirty Six Chambers, but in the UK that was the album that everyone loved from the Wu. It was the first rap album to go number one in the UK. Wow, wow, that's big, that's big, that's big. See, I would have never even imagined. But you know. I mean, but you guys were were touring around this album. Oh yeah, yeah, and definitely. I'm sure it definitely. was bananas in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere. Man. Everywhere. Everywhere, man. Right, because now you guys are touring off the new album and the first one is being considered a classic, so you got all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The flame is lit, man. Okay. What, what were some of the greatest like memories of, of these tours? And I mean, the greatest memories, man, are just seeing, you know, everyone being together, man. Mm -hmm. You know, all the energies together. There's no one, there's no one missing on stage. You know, so I mean, the shows are just dynamic, man. You know, everybody's there, everybody's vibing, everybody's having a great time. Success is beautiful. You've escaped your neighborhood, you know, situations, and you know, it's a whole new life that you're experiencing. Well, Triumph is the first million dollar music video. Mm. Was that before Waterfalls? Triumph? Possibly, I'm not sure. I think it was like a similar time. Okay. That was another big yeah. video at the time, I remember. But, Definitely. But they're, they're saying it's the first million dollar music video. Brett, Brett Ratner. Ratner, correct. Who went on to do, what, like Rush Hour? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> big yep, yep. hundred million dollar films actually directed that video. Yes, he did. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you are you getting it all geeked out like as you're directing, as you're part of this million dollar music video? Because like, it's just all regular to you at this it's, point. It's still a new experience. So, like I said, from from the inside, you know, it's a different feeling. When you look back on it, you sometimes you you appreciate it more. Like, wow, you know, because now you can actually see the work. But when you're in the mix of creating the work. Sometimes it's hard to really see where you're at in time, you know. Between then, RZA drops Liquid Swords, right? Jizza. Jizza, I'm sorry. Jizza, Jizza drops Liquid Swords. Correct. Uh, which, honestly, I think the song Liquid Swords may be my favorite Wu-Tang song mm. ever. Mm. Like, I, I was thinking about this earlier, like... Is there a Wu Tang song I like better than Liquid Swords? And I couldn't really find one. Right. You know, mm. lots of great songs in the catalog. No offense to everyone else in Wu Tang. Right. <laughs> I know they're gonna be watching this. And, right. But like that, that one right there, I think just captured the Wu Tang essence so mm. well with like that beat and like how he was spitting. Right. How right. Like, you know, the simplicity of it, but it was like so intricate. Like you know what I mean? I mean, he is the grandmaster of it he all. Is. So you yeah. Know. And then uh, Raekwon drops the purple tape. Cuban Links, right? Yeah. Mm. And you were on Glacier's Ice. Correct. Which I think, that, that's my favorite Master Killer verse. Wow. Thank you, brother. Appreciate and just that. a great, a great song. Wow. You remember how, how you put that together? Man, that was like, uh, okay, Mystery Chess Boxing was like maybe the first rhyme. That was probably like my second or third <laughs> rhyme, man. You know what I mean? I'm serious, man. Just sitting down, putting it together and then learning how to say it in the booth, you know, but I'm around a lot of great influences as far as everyone that I'm around has basically mastered their craft already. So when I'm in the studio with the rest of the clan, you know, it's a great learning experience, man, you know, to see how it's 
to be right there firsthand to see how it's done. So, you know, it's a great school. Yeah, I bet. Uh, absolutely. So RZA said that the recording of Wu-Tang Forever started the decline of the group. Started the what? Decline. Decline of the group? Yeah, in terms of you guys working together and being, you know what I mean, a cohesive unit. Oh, wow. No, you didn't notice that? Well, why would he say? Why did he say that? Asked by Angus Beatty on the quietest on when he felt like the Wu Tang started to decline, Riza had a clear answer. Oh, I can pinpoint it exactly. Mm. 1997, we were recording Wu Tang Forever. Before, it was kind of like I was forcing people to do it. I can even remember having physical threats. I remember some brothers didn't get along and other brothers in the beginning. And I had to say, now nah, we treat each other like brothers. But also, as people grow, you start changing. When I let that go, I kind of let go a little bit of the whole Wu Tang. And it's hard to get that back, cause you, cause now you're dealing with nine generals. Mm. Mm. Okay. That's a risk quote. See, that's from his. Yeah, that's point his of point view. of view. Exactly. He felt like he was dealing with nine generals. Right. Well, you know, each. I mean, each individual is his own entity in his own right. You know, and from his position of it, from seeing the birth of it, you know, he's the avid of it, so his intake of it is gonna be different from my assessment because he's standing from a different position. So maybe creatively, maybe that's how he felt. You know. Okay. Well, the album comes out and does like multi-platinum. Mm. Are you signed at this point or are you still? Um, I'm not even sure, I'm living, Vlad. 